God says to Job, Job, where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? And here's the point. I, God, am really, really big. I am beyond your possible comprehension. You have no way of understanding what or why I do anything that I do. Something like that. So this is this overwhelming experience, and, and Job is overwhelmed. And Job is effectively reduced to silence. But one of the last things that Job says is this line from our reading for this morning, and this is the line that I particularly focus on. I actually think this is the line that is the center of the whole book. Job says to God, I had heard of you by the hearing of my ears, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. Now what we do know from the beginning of the book is Job is good and wise and righteous, so, so Job knows a lot about God all along. But what Job seems to be acknowledging in that sentence is that I had never truly seen you, God, for who you really are. I had never seen you in all your awesome glory. I had never seen you right in front of me, up close and personal. I had never seen you in this way before. And so for Job, the book becomes, in part at least, this movement from, I wouldn't say blindness exactly, but, but not having seen, to sight, to the ability to see God. Now, Job is 42 chapters. It's quite a dramatic book as well. Our gospel reading is shorter, it's less dramatic, but you see the exact same movement in our gospel reading. So in our gospel reading, it begins, Bartimaeus is blind. Bartimaeus is a blind beggar there and, uh, outside of Jericho, and, and Bartimaeus hears that a crowd is going by. And then Bartimaeus hears that at the center of this crowd is Jesus. And Bartimaeus cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, and, and is eventually brought to Jesus. So, so Bartimaeus has clearly heard of Jesus by the hearing of his ears. Bartimaeus is blind, so he doesn't see Jesus. But this is a place where we have to pause and, and remember that when the New Testament talks about blindness, there's at least two ways it talks about it. So one is physical blindness. Bartimaeus clearly has that. Show up at the eye doctor, and the eye doctor says, read these letters, and you can't read any letters. But the New Testament also talks about spiritual blindness. That's the inability to see God, to see God in the people around you, to see God's presence all around you, that, that inability to see that God is with us. We become spiritually blind. Bartimaeus is physically blind. Bartimaeus is not exactly spiritually blind. Bartimaeus does recognize Jesus as the son of David. It's a messianic title. Bartimaeus knows that Jesus has the power to heal. Jesus himself praises Bartimaeus' faith. So Bartimaeus is not spiritually blind. But I think it's clear from the way the passage unfolds that Bartimaeus' spiritual sight is not yet as clear as it could be, as clear as it will be, that he can't see Christ entirely for who Christ is uh, physically, but, but also in this spiritual sort of way. So then Jesus says to Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? This is another place where it's worth pausing. So just think for the moment. God incarnate is standing right in front of you and says to you, what do you want me to do for you? What, what is it that you want at that deepest level. Because here's the good news, I'm God. I can do anything. Well, you probably have a bunch of answers right off the bat. So here's a couple that occurred to me as I was pondering this question this week. I'd like a full head of hair. I'd like the Braves to win the World Series. I wouldn't mind winning the lottery. You can kind of keep going. There's a whole bunch of things that would make my life better. I'd like to have my children come live close to me. So there's a lot of things that we can all probably think about that would, that would make our lives better, but these are really mostly pretty, at least in my case, pretty superficial wants. This is not the deepest longing of my soul. I was once asked that question. I don't know if you have ever been asked this question, but I, I was once, when I was not quite 40, asked, what do you want? 
the time I was going through a bit of a tough time. I think I've told this story to some of you before. And, uh, and so I was seeing a counselor, and she said, you know, what is it that you want? And I said, well, Carrie says, and she stopped me, said, for the moment, I don't, I'm not asking that question. What do you want? And I said, well, I know I should. And she said, I'm not asking what you should do. I'm asking what Harvey is your longing. What are you looking for in life? I realized I could not answer the question. It's a little bit harder question to answer than you might think if you've never had to sit down and ask yourself that question or have somebody else ask it. Well, this is what Jesus says to Bartimaeus. What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus is wiser than I because Bartimaeus had an answer. Lord, let me see you again. And I think at this point it's important to think about this blindness in sight in these two ways. Of course he means, first and foremost, I can't see, I'm blind. I would like you to make it so I can see. But I think Bartimaeus is asking more than that, or at least he gets more than that. I think there's another level at which Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus is saying, help me to see you in a way that I cannot now see you. Help me to see with my eyes but also help me to see with my heart. And this is what Jesus does. Jesus heals him, and then Jesus says, all right, go. Go about your business. Go get a good job in Jericho or, or whatever else it is that you might want to do. And Bartimaeus, who has come to see Christ, knows better than that. I'm not going anywhere without Jesus. And so the gospel writer tells us that Bartimaeus follows Jesus on the way. What this is, is a miracle. It's a miracle of healing, of course. And it's a moment of conversion. It's a moment when Bartimaeus' deepest longing to be in deeper relationship with Christ happens. And he's able to follow Christ along the way. So now we think, what is this passage saying to us? Because it is as if Christ is here with us right now, saying to each of us, what is it that you want? What do you want me to do for you? And the passage reveals to us, if we don't know it, what is in fact that deepest longing, I believe, of every human being, that, that deepest longing way down inside that says, God, what I really want, what I really need, is you. I need to see, I need to hear, I need to be in relationship, I need to feel your love, I need to love you back. Jesus does this for Bartimaeus, and of course Christ is offering this to us now, and Christ is willing to grant us this now. And so my prayer for us on this day is that we can recognize that longing, and that we can take it to Christ in prayer, and that Christ will, will heed that prayer for each of us and draw us closer. And I say that in Jesus' name. Amen. And now please stand as you are able, and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you can find on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people. Today we'll be using form four on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, <clears throat> guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good and today we pray for the 2021 diocesan cycle of prayer for saint stephen's in westboro Believe Out Loud Congregations, Stephen's Table, Pittsfield, and the Episcopal Appalachian Ministries. For the World Prayer List, we pray for Denmark, Djibouti, Moldova, Monaco, Tuvalu, Uganda, and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Today, our altar flowers and the sanctuary candle are given to the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all whose lives are closely linked to ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Today on our St. David's prayer cycle, we pray for the stewardship team, the pilots, Tony Pedio, Janessa Pedio, the Quins, Pat Reese, and the Rendricks. On our prayer list, we pray for Jeff, Jace, and Tim for recovery from COVID and protection for their families. Dan Webster for recovery from his motorcycle accident. Lori and Mike for recovery from procedures. Megan for kidney functioning. Jan and Barbara for strength. Relief from pain for Joe Juber and Pat Reese, and healing for Nolan and Sue. We also give thanksgiving for the Seaburys and all who helped them set up for and or baked for the wonderful auction that we had here yesterday. It was a great time. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them, give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Today, we ask for comfort for the O'Hare 
Kosial and Renrick families as they grieve. And we also ask for prayers for the soul of Gia Rodriguez, an eighth grader at Holyoke Community School, a char Holyoke Charter School, a student of Luis Torres, who passed away from COVID on Thursday night. And we ask for comfort for their fam her family as they grieve. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we also give you thanks for the birth of Zachary Kenneth, Patrice's great-grandson, and we pray for the UN Climate Change Conference. O oh, merciful creator, whose hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature, make us, we beseech thee, ever thankful for thy loving providence, and grant that we, remembering the account we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of thy bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Turning back to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. So we greet one another, but we peace in place. But peace, peace. So I encourage you to nod and wave and bow. And after you've finished peacing, uh, feel free to be seated while Terry sets the table.
And so I have just realized that we do have a birthday prayer for today, so we do pray for Deacon Terry's birthday. If you'd like to join me in the birthday prayer, that's on page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer, and it may even be on the screen. Let us pray. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls, and in his heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And God bless you. We continue now with Eucharistic Prayer A, which begins on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 361. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. as you are able. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. 
We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Jesus, Messiah, name of all. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, the Lord. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And now please stand as you're able and let us pray together the post-communion prayer on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please join us in hang, singing our final hymn <clears throat> in the dark blue hymnal, number 628, 628. Thank you. 